and welcome to the Bottom Up Podcast. I'm your co-host, Mike Parsons, and as always, I'm joined by the survey guru himself, Mr. Chad Owen. And if you remember from last episode, I said that we're going to reveal my favorite feature of SurveyMonkey here. So what do you think that uh, feature is, Mike? Mm, I have a feeling it might be about sending the beacon, lighting the fire and getting hundreds and thousands of people flooding into your survey and telling us what they think and what they feel. Yeah. And SurveyMonkey can do it for you. That's the best part. You don't need a giant email list. You don't have to uh, buy a list or spam people. SurveyMonkey does it all for you. And so We're going to talk to you about that in today's episode on SurveyMonkey's collectors. Yeah, so once again, if you are not able to get online and log into SurveyMonkey while we're chatting, totally cool. You can listen along. You will get an extra boost if you are actually in SurveyMonkey because you'll actually see the things that we're talking about, which will be a more powerful learning experience. If you want to double down and really learn, you can go to bottomup.io and you can grab one of our masterclasses We've done a whole masterclass on SurveyMonkey that you can check out too, and that'll take you right through it. But we're just giving you some of the highlights here. Let's talk about getting people to fill out your survey. Now, obviously, if you know your customers, if you have a customer base, or if it's for employees, or you want to survey your sports team or whatever, you can make a web link with SurveyMonkey and you can send it out to those people. You can have SurveyMonkey forward slash Jane's soccer team. And when people go to that, they can fill out the survey. So when we talk about collectors, it's not only that way that I just mentioned with the web link to bring people in, there's actually a lot of different ways you can get people to your survey. So you can push this directly into your mobile app. You can put it into Facebook Messenger. You can even have it in an analog kiosk survey setup. So when people come into your cafe or or your retail store, you can post it to social media. You can actually, something I don't usually advise, Chad, is using the email collector where SurveyMonkey will email directly the people you survey. I think if you're going to do that, you actually want to use a professional mail service or if it's to a known group of people, just send it through your corporate mail. But I think we want to spend the most time talking about buying targeted responses. I think this is what is the icing on the cake, the joie de vivre for Chad Owen when we talk SurveyMonkey. And one thing to not forget here is SurveyMonkey tracks everything, like absolutely everything. So when you get to analyzing results, you can even filter the information based on how you went and collected the information. So if you have a list of customers that you are manually you know, sending through your CRM, the survey, and you're also buying targeted responses from the general public, you can compare those two different audiences inside of SurveyMonkey. But I don't want to gloss over this feature that SurveyMonkey will allow you to move some sliders and choose some attributes of targeted survey takers and then recruit, pay them a nominal fee and get them to take the survey for you. So without any work on your part, other than choosing some demographic and geographic information, they'll get them all of the survey takers that you'll pay for. And so this is particularly relevant if you want to talk to non-customers, if you want to talk to people in different markets. Let's say you've got a great product in the UK and you want to launch in Australia. You could do a quick survey from the UK. SurveyMonkey will recruit the people in. So if you've got a consumer product If you want to talk to the general population in a market, in a city, you can actually do so. And the beauty here is that SurveyMonkey will recruit the people. And I would say, Chad, it's not perfect, but it's absolutely good enough to give you directional feedback. And what I mean by that is you will struggle a little bit to find 35 to 55 medium to high income professional executives using this tool. The reason why is because those people don't have time to fill out surveys during the day. But in general, it's a very good way to get a quick read. And I must say that when I have compared SurveyMonkey's results to other real enterprise surveys, there is a definite correlation in the data. I even had a time recently where the US data that we surveyed on SurveyMonkey was very close to the patterns 
and the insights that this big global brand had from surveys and feedback that they had done with their existing customers. So the risk, obviously, in that situation was that we said, hey, we've got all these insights about the American market. And then they go, well, all our surveys are giving different results. That would have been really tricky to try and work that out. But the really pleasant surprise we had is the themes and the insights and the recommendations all ran closely together. And that was a really powerful moment for me when I realized, like, wow, SurveyMonkey is gold because it's correlating well. So the people that they can recruit, they're doing actually a good job on recruiting real human beings to give real feedback. So it gets really interesting. I mean, it's been really powerful tool for us, hasn't it, Chad? Yeah, for just a couple of hours and a couple hundred dollars, you can get some, as you said, valid data that correlates to what you would maybe have to pay tens of thousands, if not hundreds, thousands of dollars for going, you know, to a professional research firm. Or we had another client, they thought this was magic. They're like, oh my God, how did you get this information? And so quickly, we have whole teams of people doing this and here you were able to do it overnight. And Granted, it's not the same kind of data, but it's certainly directional and points you in the right direction when it comes to understanding, you know, customer sentiment. Let's really break this down a bit and let's actually get into how deep you can actually get into this. So you can actually go into the SurveyMonkey tool. And right now, obviously, we are in this collector's area that we've been talking about. Yeah, collect responses and then the buy targeted responses. That's the key area. Now, so here's the interesting thing is you can configure this like crazy. So you load it in, you're going to get probably the following default settings. Country, all of the US, gender, all genders, all ages, 18 and above, all incomes. Now, Chad, we have to warn everybody what happens as soon as you start playing with all the targeting options and all the filters on audience. So as of the beginning of 2020, that gen pop survey will cost you anywhere between like $3 and $4. But as soon as you start narrowing it to, you know, surveying only women or only the UK or only people that make $150,000 or more, the cost per survey participant goes up quite a bit. Let's look at some fun ones. You could do employment status full-time, part-time, retired. So you could actually pre-screen all your respondents to those. You could do it on technology. What devices do they own? What are some other fun ones? Do they like gaming? For example, you could just survey Xbox users. Do they have cable or satellite or internet only? Yeah, this is great. Pet ownership. Oh, this is good. Owns a dog, owns a cat. Are you ready for this next one, Chad? owns a fish. (laughs) Because I'm dying to know what fish owners are thinking. Okay. No disrespect to all our listeners that own fish, but this is the power, right? So you can go and look at how much they frequent movie cinemas. Do they have mortgages? You know, what kind of vehicles, what sort of social media do they like? The caution here is obviously not only does this get more expensive, but the more refined your targeting gets, the longer people take to fill it out. Yeah. So if you're looking for overnight results, you might not be able to get them. You might have to extend the survey time to several days, if not a week or two. Exactly. But for me, Chad, I must say I agree. The ability to recruit an audience in is so turnkey because think about what would be your other option if you couldn't do this. Like, what would you do if you couldn't recruit it for them and you're in a different country? You just couldn't do it. You'd have to pay a recruitment firm tens of thousands of dollars is what you'd have to do. And you and I both know because we do recruit via professional consumer recruiters and it is very expensive. Now, granted, those are for in-person experiences or interviews, but still, SurveyMonkey, just by the fact that it's been around for, I remember running into people from SurveyMonkey at South by Southwest in like 2008 or 2009. So they've been around for a long time and they've got the user base that they can just go out to blast out these surveys and do much, if not all of that recruitment work for you. There you go. So this is the huge benefit from the SurveyMonkey platform if you use their collectors. It's a great way to quickly understand what customers are thinking and feeling, particularly when you want to go global, your ability to 
leap into another market and quickly get a taste of what people are thinking. It is so, so powerful. But Chad, we've got two more episodes left of the Survey Monkey series. What's left for our listeners? Well, everything that happens after you've sent out your survey and you're starting to collect all of those wonderful responses. But it doesn't just stop there because data in Survey Monkey that doesn't go anywhere is no good to you. So we'll wrap up the series talking about reporting and sharing out all of the wonderful insights from the surveys that you spent a lot of time creating, double, triple checking, and recruiting for. All right. So there you have it, everyone. That is the fifth part of our seven-part series on SurveyMonkey. If you're keen to know more, head over to bottomup.io. You can get all our podcast archive. You can even grab your own masterclass. And we've got two more really useful episodes left in the SurveyMonkey series of the Bottom Up podcast. 